Ah, I can't believe 2019 is over. It's been another year that fast. I was not planning on doing a video like this today. Actually, I was going to just take today and chill. But as I put up a post on um, Instagram, I realized that a lot of people liked the post and they said that it was inspiring and things of that nature. So I decided that I'm going to share that with you guys here today on my music channel and also on my personal channel, David D. Smith. I know my personal channel I've been away for probably about a week or so, but I've been busy with the holidays, even though I shot some videos, I haven't really had time to edit them. But we're going into a new decade here, 2020. I can't believe it. It's re it really blows my mind to think that I can sit here and remember when people were panicking because of Y2K. They're making such a big deal, like, oh, it's about to be the end of the world. The computers are about to crash. Everything's about to go crazy. And to say that that was 20 years ago, it blows my mind because I don't even feel like I'm that old. I mean, I'm 27, but still, it just blows my mind to think that. But this, what this video is going to be about, I generally would do videos about my goals and things of that nature at the end of the year. But since we're at the end of a decade, I feel like it's important for me to recap what has gone on with me personally over the past 10 years, where I started, where I'm at now, the ups and downs in between, because there's been plenty of ups and downs in between. And I left some stuff out in here. I just really hit a lot of key points. And as you guys see, I have it on my iPad. Um, I'm just going to read through it. Some of you guys may not really, you know, some of y'all might not even follow me on Instagram to have even seen the post. And some of y'all might be driving or whatever it is you're doing, you prefer to listen. So I'm just going to go through, share my story with you guys over the past 10 years. And I might mention some things that I want to do for the next 10 years. I don't know why I paused there for a second. Like I was, my mind was, I'm thinking 20 years, but go over what I did for the last 10 years and then go to maybe what I think about doing for the next 10. Cause I actually had them all written out, but I may do that in a separate video at a different time. Also, I'm going to do my goals for 2020. I'm going to drop that video separately, but this is just the recap of the decade. Once again, I really appreciate all you guys for the support. I started this channel, I actually started the channel, I want to say in 2009, but I didn't really do anything with it until generally 2010. I started uploading some beats and then it wasn't nothing really too serious, but I'm going to get into that in a second. But just to be able to have over 30,000 subscribers, 7 million views, even though the, I'm not going to say the majority, but I had got like three and a half million off of one video, which was Try Me by Dej Loaf that I put on my channel. So... Yeah, I'm going to get into all that, but I appreciate y'all for y'all support. That's really all I wanted to say with everything, whether it's the courses, the comments, sharing the videos, anything. I appreciate it. I mean that sincerely. So for me to get started, 2010, I graduated from high school, started community college, and started working at Tim Hortons. If you're not familiar with Tim Hortons, it's pretty much a coffee place. It's kind of like a Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. You know, we got donuts, everything. I started working there. That was my first real job out of high school I got started right out of high school uploaded my first beat on youtube which you guys can go back and look it's a crappy lex luger type beat that i put together using fl studio back in the day so that's my first beat that i uploaded 2011 wasn't really eventful i was i just started working at target and the funny thing is i felt like working at target was like a badge of honor for me i, I always wanted to work at target when i was a teenager because i loved going to Target. I used to go to Target so much and I was like, I gotta work here, I gotta work here. And then one of my older cousins worked there and I was like, man, it's cool, he worked at Target. I was still in school at the time. 2012, I was still working at Target, still in school, but I sold my first few beats via MyFlashStore.net. If you guys aren't familiar with MyFlashStore.net, that's what Airbit used to be years back. It was it was cool back then. It used to be on the forum and all that stuff. It used to be very active on that website. It's kind of like what BeatStars is now, minus BeatStars doesn't have the form and things of that nature, but BeatStars is better, in my opinion. Um, 2013, I started working at an EOTech factory. If you don't know what EOTech is, if you guys look at guns or like in the movies, you'll see where they have the scopes on the guns. We used to make those. Used to be at that factory all the time. Like if you're on Call of Duty, some of the EOTech stuff is on there as well. So, yeah, I used to make those all day, every day, like 45 hours a week. And sometimes we had overtime. I'd be sitting there just minding my business, couldn't write, couldn't take notes, couldn't read, couldn't do nothing in between parts. So I just sat there and did that. My son was born on May 22nd, 2013. I graduated from WCC, which is Washington Community College. I did that, I want to say, like a week before my son was born. 
uh, an artist named Doughboy Scooch, if you're from the Detroit area. If you, if you know Doughboy's Cash Out, he's a member of Doughboy's Cash Out. He put out a project called A Bronx Tale, which I did two beats on for the tracks called I Keep Trying. And then Deep Thought, one of them was a Sade sample, another one was a Janet Jackson sample. And that was the first time I could actually go buy something physically that I've worked on as far as music goes. I was able to meet him at Northland Mall, buy some of the CDs off him. He didn't even know who I was. And the whole thing about that is, back in the day, artists used to really post their um, email addresses on Twitter. And that's how I got it. He was going back and forth with somebody about some beats. And he just said, send them to my email right here. And I saw it on his page. So I just took the email, copied it, and I threw some snippets on there. I was like, hey, tell me what you think about these beats. And that's just how that came about back then. And it was kind of spammy now. I wouldn't do that now at all. But... That's what I did back then just to see what would happen. I didn't do it to everybody. I did it in that one particular situation. And I was a huge Doughboy's Cash Out fan. I still listen to their old music now. Payroll is one of my... Payroll is probably my favorite artist out of Detroit. Like, honestly, that's my favorite rapper out of Detroit. Um, so needless to say, I was excited about working with somebody just in the camp. And Doughboy Scooch was one of my favorites out of that group. Because he was lyrical and stuff. He didn't have as much music out at the time, but... He was definitely one of my favorites, so that was a good thing for me. Um, I also have one here. I sold a few beats here and there. I might have had people hit me up, and it's like, okay, here's that beat, because I used to post beats consistently on Instagram every day. I would just post a beat, and I'll have people hit me up. I probably should go back to doing that now if I wanted to sell more beats, but that's what I used to do back then. 2014, this was a very interesting year for me. At the top of the year, I started uploading a beat every day on YouTube. Like, literally, I called it the 365 Project. I did it for like half the year. All of those beats are still up on my channel. I just have them on private so nobody can look at them and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, despite, no, before I get to that, started sending Dave Loaf a ton of beats. So at this point in time, Dave Loaf was a local artist. I don't know if she, I, I, I found out about Dave Loaf because I liked Say It Ain't Tone and Overroll and they were part of a group called IBGM. They had a mixtape come out at the top of the year. I listened to it. I'm like, who is this person right here? I just want to work with her. She sounds dope. She'll sound good over some of my beats. I just want to send her some beats. And that's pretty much how I went. I just sent some stuff. She reached out and said she liked it, all that stuff. She said she didn't like when producers sent snippets. And I knew that she was talking about me, but she didn't even know I had Twitter at the time. So that was crazy. So I just started loading her up with tons of beats for free. Like, I wasn't doing anything like, oh, you had to pay me back, anything like that. I'm just sending beats because I just wanted to create some type of music. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that, like, it's too much about, I need this 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars. And it's like, no, nah, I will give somebody my beats. And if it's somebody I want to work with, it's like, take it. You need the track out, take the track out. Let's, let's just get this thing out there into the world. And it don't do me no good if you like the beat and then you don't do nothing to it because you ain't got the stems or anything like that because I'm waiting for you to pay me. At that time, it's like $25 for a lease. It's like, no, nah, bro, like, just get it out there. Let me see where I was at. Despite being a phenomenal employee, I was laid off. They literally called me in the office, and I talked about this on my Keep Pushing video, if you guys haven't checked that out. Um, they told me about how I knew all the jobs on the line, all that stuff. I was never late, never gave them any hard times. I stayed to myself, but we got to let you go. So that's what happened at that point. Um, while having unemployment, I decided to take those few months and fully dedicate myself to making music like at that point in time my son wasn't even a year old and i would just have him in his little car seat <laughs> or whatever he had he might have a little bouncer all that stuff and i'll just be sitting there making beats all day go to the park walk around clear my head that was very important to me at that time and i kind of want to get back to that it i feel like that was me connecting with god just being outside connecting with god connecting with my thoughts and i'm just going through everything like i'm not stressed out about nothing yeah i had my little worries about finances and stuff what if this don't work what if that don't work like i literally took an unemployment check and bought complete ultimate at that point in time straight up and um yeah so i fully dedicated myself to that and then when my job had called me back let me go back a little bit i made the beat for trying me a few days after being laid off i called it good life and it also gave me a good life me and days love talk about that um so my job called me back a few months later because Try Me like was recorded in like, I want to say April or May of that year of 2014. But Dave Love didn't put it out on SoundCloud until uh, July 4th, I believe it was, of 2014. So my job called me back in like the end of August, early September and was like, hey, you want to come back? 
And I was like, uh, I'm going to pass on that. I'm just going to keep on working, trying to do what I do. And during that time, I was getting a few different beat sales. I sold beats to somebody like in Nova Scotia for like $500 and stuff like that, which I had never done before. So that was just stuff to keep me motivated to keep going what I was doing. So after I got off the phone with them telling them I wasn't coming back or whatever, I ended up hearing Try Me on the radio. And ironically, I was down right outside of my community college. Like literally, I was right at the light and the school was right there on the left. And I heard Try Me and I was like, wow, that's my song, that's my song. And then from there, everything just started to snowball and I'm just grateful, you know, I'm, I really enjoyed that. That really made me happy. Um, I sold two beats for more than I made all year working at the factory, working 45 hours a week. I sold the beat for Try Me and um, We Good. Those were the two first singles that came out for Days Loaf, and I sold both of those beats. I'm not going to go into details about the money, but the money was nice. The first thing I did was went to Taco Bell and bought an Xbox One because I had bought an Xbox One just to sell it when they were sold out, <clears throat> and I wanted one so bad, so that was the first thing I did. Um, soon after that, I signed to Warner Chapel maybe like a few weeks before Christmas, and that's when, that's when stuff... <laughs> that was a nice, nice, nice check. Or as we say now, that was a nice bag. <laughs> 2015, I received my first plaque for Try Me being number one on Urban Radio. I had Lil Wayne rap on the single I produced, which was me, you, and Hennessy. Originally, it was a sample. But shout out to Ghost, um, Ryan Dimitri, Enterprise Music. If you guys check him out, he did Dilemma for Nelly and all of that stuff. He helped me get that beat to where it was. We rearranged Lil Wayne and Dave's Love vocals, all of that stuff over the holidays and just trying to get everything together. Uh, Trami was nominated for a BT Hip Hop Award, so I was there, nominated first time doing something like that. Had a few tracks released and unreleased with some major artists. I had tracks with Boosie, uh, Young Thug, who else? I had tracks with a nice amount of people, they just never came out. And I had some stuff that did come out, like with Plies, Trade of Truth, Lil Dirt, things of that nature. So, still had stuff going on. And, of course, Dej Loaf, uh, where was I at on here? Took a lot of trips back and forth to Atlanta. Like, I would fly to Atlanta to work with Dej Loaf. I was going there for the award shows. I would fly down there with my girlfriend for her working on her career stuff. So, I was really back and forth between Detroit and Atlanta a lot that year. Uh, bought my first DSLR camera. And started taking my photos and then started uploading beat making videos consistently on YouTube. The camera I use now is not the camera I used back then. I had a little cheap camera I bought from Target. I'm not going to say it was cheap. It was maybe like three or $400. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just set it up because I originally started making beat making videos on like a little pay-as-you-go. Was it a pay-as-you-go phone? I don't know if it's a pay-as-you-go phone or what. Basically, I broke my phone and I didn't have any insurance on it. It was like a Samsung Galaxy. So I had to go buy this phone while I was working at Target. I don't even think I might, I might not have been working at Target at that time. I had to go buy something, and I started doing my videos on that, and that's like 2012, 2013, maybe 2014. It's somewhere in that ballpark, maybe 2013, 2014. So I started doing that, so I upgraded the quality with the camera, but then that's just how I stayed consistently doing it. And let me see where I'm at. 2016, I received a gold plaque for Try Me, received two BMI awards, started getting recognized for my work on YouTube, which is amazing, for real, for real. Started building my channel even more. And it's like when people recognize me from this stuff, it's amazing because this is something that I'm really passionate about doing this, sharing information, trying to help people and also just love making music. So it, it means a lot to me. Uh, I invested in a new camera, which is the camera I'm using now, the Canon ATD. And uh, the song I produced was used in a commercial, which was a Mac commercial, Mac Makeup. Dej Loaf had a collaboration with them, and one of my favorite songs that I produced for her was Butterflies. If you guys haven't heard it, you should go check it out. One of my favorite beats that I've ever done. It's not the typical hip-hop stuff. It's I just love that beat, and the commercial is out there. And I also want to mention, with the investment of the camera came, a microphone came different lenses, all of that stuff, so I can get everything the way I want it, so it could be top quality for the channel. And even when it came to me taking pictures of myself, I felt like I needed better quality. So here we are, 2017, upgrading my studio equipment. That's when I first got the Yamahas. I got this microphone that I'm talking to right here. I may use this for the video, the stands, all that stuff. I was just 
investing in studio stuff, buying different VSTs and things of that nature. Started investing in the stock market. I learned that by reading books, which I have right here. Started reading books to learn. Started working with Native Instruments. Shout out to Mick Benjamins, Native Instruments, everybody over there. Because I really mean it that you guys have helped me change my life. As far as my brand go, working with you guys have really helped me. And I really do appreciate that. 100%. I know I told you that personally, Mick. I, I sent you a message saying that, and I also told you on Instagram today, but man, it meant a lot to me, for real. Uh, had a few miscellaneous tracks out. I taught my first beat boot camp with Hell of an Ant Beats. If you guys don't know who Hell of an Ant Beats are, man, they are legends out here. And, and to me, I feel like if you got a Mount Rushmore of Michigan or the, of the Michigan producers or even the just the history books, yeah, I'm in there because I worked with Dave Sloth and, you know, stuff came from that. But those are people I look up to, like, for real. I want to get get consistent work with them. Like, they always, you always hear a hell of a damn beats, man. So I always tell them that when I see them and I look up to them. And it was an honor to be able to be doing a beat boot camp with them, teaching people machine while they teach people the way that they do things and things of that nature. After that, I have Then November happened. I felt like everything was collapsing around me. I was in a dark place not knowing what was going to happen next. And it was one thing after another. I had thought of giving everything up. And that's for real. Like, when I say thought of giving everything up, I mean, like, I thought about really being, like, me making these beats is cool, but it's like, every, I, I can't even describe the feelings that I had at that point in time. I'm glad that I kept going, for sure, but I was just in a very dark place. Like, I literally have a video. <laughs> I have a video on my phone of me just, like, talking to myself about it and trying to tell myself, like, Everything gonna be all right, man. You gotta keep pushing. Everything is falling apart. And I was crying while, like during the video. And I watch that video every now and then. I'll never delete it because it takes me back to that moment because I was in like everything. I just felt like everything was falling apart. Like you name it, I felt like it was falling apart. And uh, I felt like it was necessary for me to keep pushing through it. I feel like it was just a test because November to all the way maybe about the summer of 2018 was like the roughest patch I've had like losing the job and everything was nothing compared to all the stuff I was going through and it was I wouldn't even say it was about money because like I still had money and stuff like that but it's like on a personal level stuff was just falling apart and I didn't know what to do it would be one thing after another and this and this and this and this and then the financial stuff come too but that's not even the worst part about it it's more so about the mental the personal stuff I was going through and yeah, I don't I may talk about that stuff one day, but um that'll be a while before I do that though, because like I said, that just takes me back to a very dark place. I'm glad I went through it though, because it I learned a lot about myself going through that stuff. Like it really showed me it really showed me who I was at the end of the day. Like I didn't give up, I didn't fold, I kept doing what I believed in, even though I had the thoughts of being like, man, forget this stuff. <laughs> this is just, I don't know what's going to happen. And it wasn't really anything necessarily that happened with music. It was, I don't even know. It was just a bad time because I was still doing my thing like with YouTube. Like you guys wouldn't even be able to tell. Like some of y'all was like, yo, you going to do another video about um, your Keep Pushing Part 2? And I'm like, no, nah, I couldn't do it because of the space I was in. And yeah, I, I guess it's something you go through as a man. Like I said, I'll, I'll discuss that as at a later time. That's for a whole other video. I could do a whole three or four hour video on that one topic alone. Stuff was crazy at that point in time. Um, 2018, obviously I kept pushing. I started betting it all on me. I was no longer waiting on people. I put my all into building my brand and focusing on building myself up. While I do that, I want to read something to y'all, actually, because this goes along with that, if I can find it real quick, because I don't want to hold y'all up. Uh, let me see. Because uh, Ghost actually sent me this message in the midst of me going through all of that stuff, man, and I appreciate that message so much. I just have to find it. Like, literally, October 30th, 2017, 7.09 p.m., I was sitting in my house... <laughs> Kid you not, I'll be, I'll be real with this. I was sitting in the empty house, just like, damn, <laughs> excuse my language. What am I going to do now? Like, straight up, he hit me up. It was just simple, what's good, bro? What's up, man? How you doing? A little stressed, but I'll figure things out too. And then he literally said, um, just trusting God and working on music, bro. Don't stress out, bro. Trust the Lord. You are praying, you are a praying man, and you know God is faithful. He gave you a talent to be used to accomplish his purpose. Don't lose sight of that. 
everything is coming together. God has a destiny for you beyond music, bro. Music is just the door that leads you to a greater door. This is God's word on the subject as a Bab as soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. And, you know, I don't talk about, like, religion and stuff like that on my channel because I know everybody had different religions and different beliefs, but I believe in God and I have my own experiences and stuff like that. But when he sent me that, like, literally, it was random. Like, I was sitting in an empty house. <laughs> like, literally, I'm just sitting there like, yo, like, what am I going to do about this and this and this? And I had, like, my plate was full with so much it was just full with stuff and I'm like I don't know what to do and I felt like I was kind of drifting off kind of losing myself from some things that I was the certain ways I was acting and things of that nature I felt like it wasn't like me to be the way I was and it was just it was just crazy at that point in time but and I feel like music is a part of what I do but I feel like I'm I have a bigger purpose here on earth and I felt like that for a while and even at that point in time I guess it was me trying to figure out myself and now as I've continued on, it's like I love music. Don't get it twisted. I love making beats, love all of this stuff. But I really feel like helping people, trying to help people along their path, helping people try to find a way that they can be financially free in their own life, building a legacy, leaving a legacy for our children and stuff like that. I feel like that's my bigger purpose. And I'm just moving with that. Like, like I said, don't get it twisted. I still love music, still want to get placements, still want to sell beats over here, still want to do all that stuff. But it's like... That message really means something to me. And I'm going to post that because that's the message of the decade for me, man. For real. Maybe one day I'll muster up the courage to share that. Maybe I'll drop that video, like I said, in that empty house. <laughs> but it was crazy. Crazy times. Crazy times. But, um... Now, where's that? Okay, I started building more streams of income, which is very important. I did my one-on-one -on -one sessions with people from all around the world regularly. I had people from Australia, the UK... Everywhere, everywhere across this country, to Canada, all one in one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. And thank every last one of you that took those one-on-one -on -one sessions. It means a lot to me. And especially during that dark time, it gave me something to kind of keep my head on when it came to doing all this. And, um, yeah, I really do appreciate that. I eventually created a machine video course. And it changed my mindset when it comes to my business. Like, with that, I kept praying for ways to build up more streams of income. And it will always be. Make a machine course, make a machine course, make a machine course, make a machine course. I felt like it was God putting it in me. And I would just sit there for months and be like, yeah, I could do that, but no, I'm not. Yeah, I could do that, but no, I can't. I had every single excuse as to why I wasn't going to do it. And it just kept coming to me. Like, it was like when I was in the shower, it just hit me. So one day I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I shut down, I recorded it two or three days, edited everything. Everything was done. But I didn't put it out for months later because I wasn't really confident. Like, I'm like, yo, like, is this really something people going to want? How am I going to make this work? I don't know how to upload this, where I'm going to upload this to. How do I make sure people don't steal it? How do I do this? How do I do that? And then I just, at one point, it just popped in my head, like, teachable. Do the research. That's where it's going. So, you know, I, I thank God for planting that seed, for real. Um, I had a few tracks come out. The biggest at the time was a track with Cash Doll. I have shout out to Janaira. Janaira is an artist, local artist, songwriter that I work with from time to time. And she got that track to Cash Doll with her on the hook. So I'm grateful for that. Bow Wow recorded over one of my beats I put up on YouTube. I have a Mary J. Blige sample beat that's still up on my channel right now. It's one of my top videos, actually. And um, Bow Wow downloaded it, rapped on it, reached out to me, asked me for the beat, sent it to him. Nothing happened with it yet, but it's still the fact that that happened. Like, don't be afraid to put your beats on YouTube. Don't be afraid about people stealing your beats, man. Like, y'all be whole, y'all be stopping yourselves from that. Like, if you put anything out there, it can be stolen. So it's like, <laughs> if you want to at least try something, like, just go for it. Don't worry about it getting stolen. 2019, uh, the 20, how can I put this? The end of 2018, like the tail end of 2018 was me getting myself back together. Like I'll say from September or August to like, I just thought about, I even had some type of health issues in 2018. Like everything was that 2017, the end of 2017 to the middle of 2018 was just crazy for me. But, um, the end of 2018, Leading up to like 2019 was just amazing. I got myself back together. 
I made decisions to do certain things that helped propel me in different directions, like just focusing on me and building up my own thing. And then like this year, as you guys know, I got engaged to my best friend. She been with me through all the ups and downs. I really do appreciate her, love her to death. An artist named Jay Reed dropped an album that I had a lot of tracks on. At that time when I met him, I think I met him in 2018. And um, went to his house, met him. And uh, we talked about music and he was talking about how he's looking for a specific sound and all of that. So I just played him some beats where I was like, you know, this ain't my usual style, but I'm having fun making this. Let me just play it. And every single one I played like that, he he loved. And I'm, it was it was a great experience working with him. I look forward to working with him more. Um, I went to NYC, did an interview at Power 105.1 where I discussed my brand, my YouTube channel, and my course and that was great. Shout out to him, Easy. Shout out to my fiance for helping set that up through the stuff that she does for her own business and things of that nature. I appreciate that. And um, Native Instruments flew me out to Germany for a creator's base. That was something like I told them when I first talked to them that that was a goal of mine. Like I would love, like I want to have that type of relationship with these companies to where I'm going and you know, seeing what's going on, sharing my ideas, meeting other people that use the stuff, things of that nature. And I specifically say I would love to come to Germany and just be out there and see what happens. And I'm forever grateful for that. Like, that was an experience. I've never been on that side of the world. I've been out of the United States before, but not on that side of the world. And I'm forever grateful for that experience. It opened me up to a whole lot more. I want to do that more. I want to make sure my family gets out there like that and just... um yeah, I look forward to working with them in the future, man. They really they really took care of me out there and I'm very grateful. Met some great people and they the people I met even inspired me even more to come back home and be like, it's possible to make this stuff happen on your own. Keep going with it and find your own way to make it work for you. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Don't worry if anybody else doing the same thing you're doing. Pepsi and Coke sell the same thing, but they both around. So it's not like I got it. I don't have to hate on nobody that's doing this or doing that, you know. Or if somebody else drops a machine course, it's, it's no bad blood. It's like everybody got their own thing that they doing. We can have our own products doing the same thing, and it just opened up my eyes so much more. Even if I felt like something that I wasn't one hundred percent confident in, it might have been like, oh, well, I do this this way, but everybody, uh, there's a thousand people saying that you need to do it this way, but I'm the one that's doing it this way, and they're like, bro, it doesn't matter. People want to hear from you if they're asking you for it. So. Shout out to Sounds and Gear for that too, man. That's one of the main people that I that was pushing me like with my machine mixing course. I'm like, man, I don't know if I should do it. And he's like, listen, bro, just do it. So I appreciate him for that. And I learned some important business techniques this year, like how to apply stuff to my business and help it grow, how to promote my stuff more and the importance of promoting and marketing, things of that nature. So I'm very grateful. Like this year, this year was a great year for me when I look back on it. It was a wonderful year. Like my son graduated kindergarten. <laughs> it was just, you know, living life and it was it was great. I'm grateful. I'm grateful I stuck through through the hard times because I could have just been like, you know what, man, I'm about to go back to working or something like that. And I'm just grateful. So to anybody that made it to this point in the video, I thank y'all for watching. And if y'all ever go through a hard time, I want y'all to take that away from this like keep pushing. That was my main point of this because a lot of people think that this stuff happens like that. And it's like this, as you see, this is a whole process. And I really feel like this is only the beginning of my journey. This is literally 10 years right here. I started making beats when I was a sophomore in high school. So just think about that. <laughs> like I'm here just to this point now. And I feel like I have so much further to go, so much work to do and things of that nature. And I ended it by saying this is just a glimpse to show you the journey of the past decade. Oh, of the journey the past decade has been, excuse me, it's been an amazing journey. I love it all, the ups and downs. I'm ready for the next 10, and that's real. Like, I'm grateful for the good. I'm grateful for the bad. It all helped me get stronger to where I'm at now, and I'm ready to keep on rolling. Hopefully, it's another amazing 10 years. I look back on it, and I'm like, this is like an amazing story. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for all y'all's support. If you guys haven't checked out my other channel, please be sure to Check that channel out if you want to subscribe. I do more stuff like this over there. If you're watching this on my music channel, that's what I was directed at. If you're watching this on my personal channel, I'm sure you already know about my music channel. But anyway, I appreciate y'all. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy New Year to all of y'all. Much, much, much success. Hopefully everyone gets, have just had success over the next decade.
You all take care. Be safe.